In this video, which is the last one for this section, we're gonna make our lives a little bit easier by setting up a second script in package.json. Inside of there right now, we have a single script, the start script. We created the start script because that is what Heroku is looking for when it starts up our application. And we learned we could always run that locally using npm run start should we want to. In this video, we're going to create a second script, a development script, which is going to run that nodemon command. So currently when we wanna start up our server using nodemon, we have to type out the command from the terminal every single time. That is nodemon followed by the path to the file, source forward slash app.js, followed by our list of extensions, js comma hbs. We have to type that out every single time we wanna start up the application. It would be much nicer to break that out into a package.json script, which we can use and reuse. The first step to get this done is to simply define that new script. So just after start or before, the order does not matter, we're gonna set up a second property on the script's object. We can pick a name for the script. I'm gonna call this dev, which is short for development. And we can also pick the actual command to run. Here, we're gonna type out exactly what we just typed out in the terminal. That is node mon source forward slash app.js with our list of extensions, JS and HBS. So with this script in place, it's gonna be a lot easier for folks to start up the dev server. It's gonna be easier for us to rerun the command, something we've had to type out so far. And as we collaborate with others, they'll be able to use the dev script as well to start up that local development server easily. Otherwise, they'd have to figure out exactly what's needed and they'd have to go through that whole problem of figuring out they need to add the HBS extension as well. If there's a command we're using often in a project, it's best to create a script that runs it so it's reusable and accessible to everyone. Even if it's just you, it's nice to be able to reuse that script without typing things out again. From the terminal, we can now go ahead and run that dev script and see what happens. Down below, I'll use control C to shut down the old process where we manually typed things out and I'll start up that dev script. npm run dev. When I start it up, what's gonna happen? It's gonna print the exact same thing it was just printing before. Here, nodemon is starting and it is starting watching for the extensions that we listed out up above. And we can see that by refreshing localhost 3000. Right here, we are still getting the application. Now, if I was to go into one of the JS files like forecast.js and I was to save the file, even if I don't make any changes, we can see that down below the server did indeed restart which is fantastic. Now that we have this in place, it's time to talk about the one catch to the solution. The only reason the dev script works is because we have nodemon installed as a global module. When we have global modules installed, it's difficult for other people to know they need to install them. The problem with global modules is that they're not local dependencies. So if we're using them in a specific project, it's best to try to install everything locally. So imagine if I gave this project to someone else. Let's say I push this up to a public GitHub repository. Someone decides they wanna add a new feature. I say, yeah, go for it. And I will integrate that into my project. So they download the code and they don't get node modules because that's ignored with git ignore. And that's fine. They'll be able to run npm install. It'll dig through the JSON files and it'll get all the modules installed. Node modules will get generated for them on their machine. It'll have express, it'll have HBS, and it'll have request. The problem is that when they go to use that dev script, it's gonna fail because while our project technically depends on nodemon, it does not have it as a dependency. And that is a problem. Now it might not take too much effort for someone to realize they have to install nodemon, but it would be nice if our app just worked right out of the box. It's also trickier when different versions expect to be used in different ways. This might not work with the version they have installed. And if we don't tell them what version we have installed, they really are helpless to solve the issue they're running against. So the solution is to uninstall Nodemon globally and to install it as a local dependency. So down below from the terminal, we can use control C to shut down the Nodemon process. And we're gonna go ahead and run npm uninstall to uninstall something. We're uninstalling a global module, so we use that G flag and the name is nodemon. 
Now, when we run this, it's going to remove node mod, which means we can no longer run it from the terminal and our script is no longer going to work. Both of them are expecting that command to be available. We can address this now by installing it as a local dependency, something that's actually listed in package.json. Right here, npm, install, we are going to install nodemon at the version we had before, 1.2.0, and from here, we're going to provide a new flag, something we haven't used before, that is hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev. When we install something and we use save dev, it lists it as a dev dependency in our project. So here under package.json, we have dependencies, we have express, HBS, and request, and we have dev dependencies, and for this, we just have node mod. Dev dependencies are dependencies you only need on your local machine while you're developing. These dependencies aren't installed in your production environment, which means that node mod is not installed on Heroku, and that's okay. Heroku never uses the dev script, Heroku just uses that start script. By adding Nodemon as a dev dependency, we're saving time, preventing Heroku from having to install things it's not going to use. You could easily install this as a regular dependency, and the application would still work like it's working now. The only difference by breaking it out into a dev dependency is that it's not installed on the production environment, which once again just saves us a little bit of time. Now the module is installed locally, which means that we actually don't have access to it as a straight up command from the terminal. So if we were to cycle through our previous commands and get to that nodemon command, we've run maybe 30 times in the class and actually execute it, it's going to fail. It's looking for nodemon and nodemon is not globally installed. Now our script is still gonna work. Scripts, they can use commands from locally installed modules. So here, it is perfectly valid to use nodemon because nodemon is installed as a dependency. It's okay to use it even though it would fail if we just straight up ran this command from the terminal. So this is the difference between globally installed and locally installed modules. Once again, the main problem with those globally installed modules is that other people aren't gonna know what modules and what module versions you're using. By bringing things in as local dependencies, anyone can run npm install, they can have everything installed, then they can start working on the project. Now from the terminal, just to make sure things are working for the final time, we're gonna run npm run dev. When we do this, things are gonna work as expected. It's able to start up nodemon, and if I refresh localhost 3000, we can see that our server is indeed up and running. So that's where we're gonna stop for this video, and that's where we're gonna stop for this section. In this section, you learned about Git for version control, you learned about GitHub for managing your software development projects, and you learned how to use Heroku to deploy your applications to production. That's where we're gonna stop for this section, and it's also where we're gonna stop for the weather application. In the next section, we'll move on to our next application, and we're gonna kick things off by talking about how we can connect to real databases from Node.js. I'm very excited to get to that, so let's go ahead and jump right in to the next one.